Let's pray. Father, again, we just come before you, and Lord, I just ask your blessing upon your word this morning. I pray that you'd open our hearts and our ears to hear what the Spirit would say to us. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Recently, I have been talking about the goodness of God and how God's not putting, you, putting it on you and things of that nature. And I plan on taking a turn because sometimes I, I feel like I've broken a record, but then I hear people say something. I say, well, I'm not done yet. i got to preach it again. And uh, uh, so this morning, uh, we're kind of going to go that direction, but yet at the same time, a different direction. And uh, our the title, uh, the message, I would call it, Are You Eternity Minded? And, uh, uh, you know, th there's a lot of people that do not understand that God is not judging today. You see it rise up on a national level many times, such as the Twin Towers. When they were taken down by the airplanes, many preachers even were standing up saying that's God's judgment on the earth on, on, for America. And uh, many people were talking about how God is judging America. Uh, there were well-known, well-respected preachers that were saying God's judging America. We also heard that some years ago when AIDS became prevalent. Well, God's judging America. God's judging the homosexuals. We, we hear it often. Recently, some have even rose up with the Ebola crisis. And that's God's judgment on people. But they fail to understand that God is not judging today. Because this is a dispensation of grace. And what that means is, this is an age period of grace. You know, there was the dispensation of law, and now we're under the age of grace. But there's coming another age called judgment. The righteous judgment of God. There are those that believe good things happen to good people, and bad things happen to bad people. We see this in the book of Job, where Job's friends shared this belief and attitude. They were like, hey Job, what did you do to tick God off so bad? People are still asking that question to those that are facing bad things in their life today. What did you do? You must have really done something for God to be judging you this way. But just because there are many folks that believe this does not make it so. The fact is, God is not judging today. Judgment will come on the day of judgment. In Romans chapter 2, verses 5 through 6, it reads there, But in accordance with with your hardness and your impenitent heart, you are treasuring up for yourself wrath in the day of wrath and the revelation of the righteous judgment of God who will render each one according to his deeds. In the New King James, instead of saying treasuring up, it says storing up. So what does that mean? Does it mean... You know, if you're storing something up, you're not spending it right now, right? If you're storing it up, it's being saved. And it's telling us here that man is saving up wrath for the day of wrath, for the righteous judgment of God. So he's not judging today. He's saving that judgment for the day when it will be the day of judgment. We're not saved by works. Everybody understand that? but we will be judged according to our works when we stand before that judgment seat. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3, I want to read to you verses 10 through 15. 1 Corinthians 3, verses 10 
through 15. And it reads there, According to the grace of God, which was given to me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another builds on it. But let each one, listen to this, take heed how he builds on it. He's talking about there's a foundation, and he says that we will build upon that foundation. Verse 11 says, For no other foundation can anyone lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. So understand, Jesus Christ is the foundation. And basically what that is saying there is that salvation is our foundation. The work that Jesus Christ did for us at the cross is our foundation for eternity. That's what we're standing on, right? We're standing on a solid rock. We're standing on uh, the, the finished work of Jesus Christ. Now it goes on to say, in verse 13, oh no, verse 12. Now, now let's talk about how we build upon that foundation. Okay, we're saved because of what He did. That's been laid. We received Jesus. We had that firm foundation. But it goes on to say, now if anyone builds on this foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, straw. Now what's that talking about? Well, the first three here, gold, silver, and precious stones, that, those are works that we do that are for the glory of God. So when we go out and do something for the glory of God, we're building upon that foundation. These are works that we will be judged accordingly. But then on the other hand, it says, the other three, wood, hay, and straw. These are also works that we do, but it may be uh, wrong works or works with the wrong motive. You see, if, if, if I'm obedient and I'm tithing and I'm giving offerings and, and, and I'm witnessing to people and, and I'm being kind to people and showing the fruit of the Spirit to people, that, that is a gold precious stones. Amen? That, well, let me just move on a bit further. Each one's work will become clear. Whether it's whether it's gold, silver, and precious stone, or whether it's wood, hay, and straw. It says each one's work will become clear for the day. Everybody say day. day. And there's a capital D there. For the day, the day of judgment, will declare it. Because it will be revealed by fire. You ever read Revelation where it talks about there's fire in his eyes, the fiery eyes of the Son of God? Just one look. And that which is gold, silver, and precious stone will stand, but that which is wood, hay, and straw will be burned away with one look. It says, This fire will test each one's work of what sort it is. Verse 14, If anyone's work which he has built on it endures, he will receive a reward. If anyone's work is burned, he will suffer loss, but... He himself will be saved, yet so as through fire. You see, if you're standing on the, on the firm foundation of salvation in Jesus Christ, you'll be saved, but the things that you build upon that salvation, the things that you build will either stand or they'll be burned. Let me just give you a couple quick examples. The altar place going around. And I put my tithe in it. That's going to be precious stones, amen? It's obedience to the Word of God. But what if I take that and go... <laughs> show everybody, drop it in there. Guess what? You just got your reward. Yeah. You got to praise a man. You see, does that mean I can never talk about tithing? Does it mean I can never talk about doing good works? I can never talk... No! It says, let men see your good works and glorify God. But what it is... What it comes down to is the attitude of, heart, of your heart. Why did you do it? Did you do it for the praise of man? Or did you do it because you just want to submit to the will of God? Did you do that kind act to glorify God? Or did you do that kind act to glorify yourself? So if you stand before God on the day of judgment, that which you did for the glory of God is going to stand and you will receive a reward for that. 
But if what you did, you did for your own selfish purpose, that is going to be burned away. Second Corinthians 5, verse 10. It says, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may receive the things done in the body according to what he has done, whether good or bad. So we have to understand, again, that God is not judging today. Somebody ought to just say, praise God. Praise God. He's not judging Christians today. But we will be judged according to our works on the day of judgment. On that day, Christians will be judged. And listen, Christians will suffer loss. We may go stand before God thinking, Woo, I have a lot of rewards coming to me. And Jesus takes a quick look at us. <laughs> We well, might be surprised how many of those are just going to be burned away because we did it for our own selfish purposes and not to glorify God. Hallelujah. Feel uplifted? Yeah. You want to be? Yeah. Amen. Some will receive fewer rewards. So others, little reward, and some, no rewards. When Scripture speaks of judgment concerning the Christian, church is referring to suffering loss. Loss of rewards. You know, we may think we're going to have all these powerful rewards, but because we live a selfish Christian life, we may just get in, as Joel in one place says, by the skin of our teeth. In other words, simply with the foundation that was laid for us, which is Jesus Christ. It talks about receiving what we are due according to what we have done. If we receive little or nothing, that is a form of punishment that the Scripture teaches. I mean, you know, if your kids come in thinking they're going to get a bunch of stuff and you find out that they did it for the wrong reasons and you don't give it to them, you think they might consider that punishment? <laughs> Colossians 3.24 says that one who works for the Lord will receive an inheritance, meaning an inheritance in the future kingdom. Then verse 25 says, those who, uh, says that those who do wrong will be repaid for the wrong, and repayment for doing wrong and payment are, uh, uh, will both occur at the judgment seat in the future. Now, there is such a thing called sowing and reaping. But that's not the judgment of God. You know, if you go out here and, and you smoke cigarettes for 40 years and you get lung cancer, God has nothing to do with that. That's called sowing and reaping. If you go out here and drink whiskey every day and gut rot and get ulcers and whatever, that's not God's judgment. That's sowing and reaping. Amen? You live a healthy life style and you have good health, that's not even a really necessarily a reward. That is just reaping from what is sown. I mean, there's folks that do all these things to their body, and then they say, why did God do this to me? Hello? Yeah. Amen? Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. So God is not judging unrighteous, the unrighteous today. Because this is not the day of judgment. We also understand God is not judging carnal Christians today because we can see they're not being judged. If God were judging them, we see a difference in their lives and the lives of those that are followers of Christ, disciples of Christ. You know that you can be a Christian and not necessarily be a follower of Christ. You can be a Christian and not necessarily be a disciple of Christ. Actually, you know, we're getting more and more of those. Actually, I don't know if you want to call them Christians. You might call them believers. Because Christian, you know what that means? They're Christ-like. Little Christians. Imitators of Christ. The former is a believer who desires to be obedient to the Word. They're committed to God. They're committed to God's people. They're committed to sharing their faith. They're committed to following the instructions of the Word of God. They're committed to the local church. 
because it's a picture of the universal church. And, and that's how we show people our love for one another. Amen? By being committed one to another. They financially support the church in tithes and offerings. They exhibit the fruit of the Spirit. This is a committed Christian. Then you have the latter. These may or may not attend church, uh, but they're not really that, uh, that, that interested in being obedient to the Word of God. Uh, they, they, do, they don't have a problem with lying. They don't have a problem with, with cheating. They don't have a problem uh, being involved in ungodly activities. Are they a Christian? Yes, if they are putting their trust in Jesus, but they're not necessarily a disciple of Christ. They're not really a follower of Christ because they're not being taught by Christ because they're not following His Word, and they're not following Christ. If they were, they'd be doing what Christ does and what He says to do. There's really no difference between the carnal Christian and those that uh, than, than the world they're living in. But yet we're called to be different. We're, we're called to be a peculiar people. You know, as you follow the Word of God, there's a difference in your life. Now, it's not that any of us are perfect, but yet we ought to attempt to follow Jesus and do as Jesus does. And the point is this, talking about judgment, are carnal Christians being judged? And I said no, because we can see they're not being judged today. Do we really see any difference in an obedient Christian and a carnal Christian as far as judgment goes? And the answer, of course, is no. We don't really see a difference. Uh, as a matter of fact, sometimes it looks, it, it looks or appears that the committed believer uh, that, that's attempting to walk upright before the Lord is, is uh, having a rougher time than the other. However, when we stand before Christ, we'll receive a reward for how we've lived our lives. You see, that's being eternity-minded. It's not just, you know, there's a lot of folks, well, you know, I'm a Christian, and I don't have to do anything. You know, I'm just believing. And, and that's true, you don't have to. I mean, it's not your works that's going to get you to heaven. And you think, you know, hey, I'm, I'm more blessed than these other people that are, you know, doing their best to follow the Word of God. You see, there's coming a day where we'll stand before Christ. And He'll look at us. And we'll, if we're saved, we'll go in. But some, yet yeah, as by fire. Amen? You see, we need to realize that we're not citizens of this world. We're citizens of heaven. You know, this is not the life that we're... This is not what it's supposed to all be about. This is all preparation for eternity. How are we preparing for eternity? By seeing how much we can get by with, how little we have to do. No, it should be by giving our lives as a living sacrifice. Saying, God, what is it you want me to do? And being obedient to what God calls us to do. Amen? Amen. Now, I knew this wouldn't be a shout message whenever I preached it, but you know, we, we need to take some medicine every once in a while. Amen? Again, Salvation is by grace and not by works. But rewards are according to what we have and have not done. Now let me just say this. I believe we're all going to be happy in heaven. But I, I do believe there's different capacities for happiness. They call it a thimble. You know, put on your thumb, I think. Finger. Drill a little. If you fill it up with water, it's full, amen? If you take a bathtub, if you fill that bathtub with water, it's full. I believe we'll all be full, but some of us have a greater capacity for fullness. So I told Cheryl, and I guarantee, I, I guarantee her that I will let her sleep in the doghouse behind my mansion. <laughs> now she's going to be happy in that doghouse, man. But I'm going to be really happy in my mansion. <laughs> and then she said, you're in the doghouse now. <laughs> Hallelujah. I do believe that the Word teaches this, that this life and how we live it will determine and have consequences concerning our eternal life. Every Christian is responsible to live in a manner worthy of their calling. See, we've all been called. We need to walk worthy of that calling. I want to encourage you today 
If you don't get anything else out of this, determine to be less worldly minded and more eternity minded. You know, there was a time where all we ever talked about was eternity. You know, we didn't talk about the here and now. I don't think that's right either because Jesus, I come to my head, likened that more abundant. He wants us to have an abundant life now. But somewhere along the way, many Christians never look at eternity, they just look at now. I think we need to have a little balance there. You know, we need to realize that God is interested in our lives now, but yet at the same time, we need to be looking at our lives for eternity. Because church, at best, most of us won't be here over 100 years. Very few of us will be here 100 years. What's 100 years compared to eternity? But yet we're acting like this is what it's all about. No, this is preparation for eternity. Maybe eternity may be here before you know it. Every time I preach a funeral, it makes me think more about eternity because I think they just went off into eternity. They're there right now. In eternity. And I really get to thinking about eternity, but I haven't had a funeral that God just put it on my heart here the last week. Eternity. And not only that. But world events remind me that his return is getting closer and closer. I want to ask you this question. Are you ready? Now, I do not mean are you saved? Although that is certainly one of the most important questions that you need to answer. But my question is this morning, Christian, are you ready? Are you ready to give an account for your life? Are you ready to stand before Him and say, I did my very best for your glory? I want to be able to say that. Amen? Have I made mistakes? Yes. Will I make mistakes? Yes. Am I perfect? No. But I want to be able to stand before Him and say, God, I gave Him my best. And not to be saved, but because I am saved. Amen. Let's make a decision this morning to be committed to living our lives in a manner worthy of our calling in Him. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Father, again, we just thank you for your word. Lord, I pray that you'll somehow take what I've said this morning and Help it to register within our spirit, Lord. That we are all facing eternity. And Lord, we thank you that you are such a loving and gracious God. We thank you that you give us this time, this age of grace, to prepare, Lord, for eternity. And Lord, I pray that there be any in here this morning that have not made a decision to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Lord, that you would speak to their heart and help them to understand the necessity of having that foundation of Jesus Christ in their life. And Father, for the rest of us, I pray, Lord, those of us that have received salvation, received that wonderful gift, Lord, I, I, I pray that we will take heed how we build upon it. Lord, that we not just live for the here and now, but Lord, that we will live our lives in such a way that we are looking beyond into eternity, Lord. Not just for our lives, our well-being, but for those around us, Lord. For how we live and how we conduct ourselves will affect those that live around us. Lord, let us be a light that's shining bright to lead people to the saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ that they too may spend eternity with us in Him. And Lord, we're careful to give You all the praise and all the glory for all that You're doing in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen.